Welcome back to our continuing coverage of Tropical Storm Lee as we hope it continues to move in and sort of gets on land and diminishes and gets out of here and lets us get back to some normality around here. But anyway, Tony Alford uh, with Terrebonne Parish Levy District was called in the field. We got an interview from him. Let's listen in and see what he had to say. Hey, how's it going, Martin? Uh, I'm out here in Montague Floodgate right now. Um, we are, of course, we've got a few difficulties down here in Montague. It's uh, not as bad as it's been in the past, for sure. Uh, Dularge has a few problems going on right now. We are opening and closing the floodgates as we can, uh, as the water lowers on the outside. Um, you know, as we talked about before, you know, uh, I think it's important that people know. Uh, I think to some degree we have been abandoned uh, by the feds down here. Um, we are slowly but surely building uh, levee sections and floodgates with local and state money. Uh, thank goodness for our state delegates um, and our local folks. Uh, been a lot of cooperation. We are building as we can afford to. Um, the, I think building that floodgate, the Bubba Dove floodgate and navigational canal is going to help us big time. Uh, that is in the process. We are, as we said before, you know, a year and a half, two years away from making this thing really uh, take effect and, and make some huge differences. Chauvin's in a whole lot better shape with the improvements we've made down there, um, as well as the part of Marganza that we put in place along with Bush Canal and Placid uh, floodgates. They are closed and operational and, and making a huge difference down at Chauvin. Uh, we just need to continue to do what we're doing and continue to build the sections as we can afford to build them. Uh, but uh, realize there is no mistake at this point, you know, the feds are reevaluating Morganza, have been for about four years. We're supposed to have a report in our hands now. Uh, we're not supposed to have that report in our hands for another two years. So what was going to be three years is going to look like six till we just get the report. So we are on our own. We need to persist and continue to do what we can do, like we have been, and uh, we're going to handle this thing. Let's just uh, keep our nose to the grindstone and keep building it, and uh, good things will continue to happen. All right, Martin, we'll, we'll keep it up. Talk to you later. All right, Tony Alfred, I saw Gordy about to come up. Does Gordy say a few words, too? Okay, we'll go ahead and get that ready. And, and Michelle, you've heard that, I, I mean, it's pretty much right. The feds haven't been too close to giving us too no, much money, have they? Done a wonderful job. And I'm hoping that this Montague tie-in levy that's there and ultimately, excuse me, the Point of Shin tie-in levy and also that Point of Shin gate would prevent a lot of that flooding in that area. In the Ward 7 area, remember, you know, the parish picked up that entire Ward 7 levee on that up to eight feet, and we are have the funds in place to bring it up to 10 feet. And working in conjunction with the levee district, with their new gates, it also prevents all that water from coming into Lake Boudreaux, which is a tremendous asset. So with the improvements they're doing that we can see, and I also want to tell you the other thing, and I'm the proudest for them, is Reach F in the uh, Home and Navigation Canal. That's the reason we're having all this water in the intercoastal and a lot of the problems that we're seeing, if they can get that barge there, that prevents the water from coming into the intracoastal and causing all, a lot of the problems. And then if they can get reach E, which there's $20 million for that done, right by uh, parallel to Falgo Canal Road, and tie that into the Dularge levee, Martin, we will see a level of protection that has never been seen in Terrebonne ever. And we're, we're so hopeful that we can all work together and get this done. I want you to talk about the Smith Ridge pump because a lot of people have been commenting on the Smith Ridge pump and I don't buy into some of the things that I've been hearing. So set the record straight on the Smith Ridge pump and tell us what the dynamics are and why some of the things have been done with that pump. Okay, well first off, the Smith Ridge pump has been, well we, we pumped down that system substantially during that prior to the event. The problem that we run into, when we're pumping on the Smith Ridge pump station, we're uh, flooding everybody in the Chauvin area because they have the floodgate closed at the bottom, they have the one uh, closed at the top by the Bayou Side Bridge, 
and all that water just stacks up and stacks up. So there's a lot of reservoir capacity in the Smith Ridge area. And certainly we're not going to uh, not go ahead and, and pump and protect people's uh, houses, but that drainage area goes way up, all the way up. And, and Martin, there's a lot of areas that just open land. It doesn't affect any of the houses whatsoever that we're not pumping. We would not let that happen. And I guess my, my point is sometimes when the pump is not on, it's not off a reason. That's the not reason. the battery's there. That's the reason. And, right. and just understand the capacity's there, that there's no threat to any homes. But again, the more water we pump out, it just goes and it floods the entire people in the, all along by Little Caillou, all the way down to the uh, pump station. And just yeah. understand that Smith Ridge pump station's at Smith Ridge, but it goes all through the Lacash system. Up in that area, it does the Bayou Side uh, Drive uh, work and everything else. But just remember, the interior portion that it covers has a lot of reservoir capacity before it would affect any of the homes. Alana, what about your district? How's it faring? It's faring pretty well right now. Um, of course, the water that, that he's talking about in the intracoastal is causing me some yard flooding, backwater flooding in the Gibson area. Right. Um, and we're just telling everybody to hold tight because as the water begins to go down, those gates are still closed back there. So these people should be okay. We put a lot of effort into the Gibson area during the river flooding. Um, I had a little situation in Gray that I thought would have caused some street flooding in Linda Ann, but we dumped a lot of money cleaning that CCC ditch and we were fortunate this time. I'm actually gonna have to leave because in Shreve, I have a, a community meeting set for six o'clock tonight that the people were so excited about having it that I don't wanna cancel it. So still up there business is it's as usual well, so i have to go drive, and there you i have go, to right? go there that's right and yeah. um so i wanted to tell you uh thank you for for having us here for allowing us to be able to come out and put the information there and again to encourage people to call the oep we do have a council per a council rep there that can automatically contact any one of us at any given time so thank you thank you miss alanda williams we appreciate it and i guess michelle thank you. michelle if you want to move on i know miss charlotte randolph is Coming in a second, we'll have both parish presidents on, so we'll move you next to Kyle. But there's a shot, and I got to tell everybody, this is my house. So I sent a camera there to show you how high the Intracoastal Canal is, and that's a pretty good height. I've seen it that high before. It doesn't alarm me. Uh, my house is right on the side of this fence, and uh, I've seen the water get this high, and it's just something that we live with on the Intracoastal Canal, but remember, this tributary goes a long way to the west and to the east, and I wanted to give you a reference of what that water looks like. So certainly anybody who's ever traversed the, the Intracoastal Canal will know that this is a pretty good height. As a matter of fact, this tropical storm has put it as high as a lot, a lot of hurricanes. So once again, Michelle, as we look at it, it doesn't matter. Just it's a <laughs> tropical storm. It doesn't matter. It's sat over here for a long time and it's pumped a lot of water. You're absolutely correct. That's why we have to be vigilant at all times. And Martin, you saw Hurricane Ike, which put more water into the parish than we've ever had before. Yeah. How does that compare in the intercoastal uh, right now and then? Probably, if, if we go back to that shot, Jay, it's probably a difference maybe two to four inches. Two to four inches is all? Two to four inches, that's it. That's, uh, that's amazing that such a small disturbance as this can put that much water in. And this is the golf course. This is the golf course right behind the Concord pump station. Of course, we see this on, I mean, because that's actually it's sort of a drain field, right. which, which occurs. And, but, but it goes to show you the magnitude that a tropical event that pumps a lot of rain puts in and also when it stalls and those southern winds just keep coming in, that is what you see. However, I'll say it again, the homes or most of the homes in Terrebonne Parish are not in danger. There have been some that have some water, a lot of them from cars passing by. There have been some businesses underwater, but, but I'm gonna tell you, if this would have happened years ago, this event, without some of the improvements that have been made, I hate to see what we'd be looking at on video uh, today, and I think everyone out there would agree 
that we've had a lot of major improvements uh, for something that sat out here for many, many, many hours. And Kyle, you're familiar with that area too. Yeah, just that levee alone that's on Concord Bypass Road has saved the neighborhood from Lamar, Barrios uh, through the last few years. Uh, when Isidore and Lily came through, we didn't have that protection. And I recall uh, where the apartments are now, by the bridge, it was eight foot of water right there. And certainly with the new development that the parish is running through, uh, through Mr. Claude Day and the, uh, the administration, uh, with the new levee they're going to put up, uh, you're going to have to send a cameraman out to a different location for the next storm because we're going to have to get footage from something else because well, it certainly won't be this I hope we I hope we get to a point where we don't have to send camera people anyway. <laughs> so, That's and, what we'd like and to look, see. I'm going to tell you what's exciting to me. And once again, I know if you have water in your business or your home, it really doesn't matter what I'm saying here, but I will say this. A lot of the shots we call in TV the money shots where you go, you know you can go every single time and that's a shot behind my house where I store the firewood and all. But you can, I'm going to tell you this, this event has pumped nearly as much water. I remember for Hurricane Ike, that big bolt on the side of that whaler on the side, it was a little bit under that. So we're talking four to six inches difference maybe from Ike to this. I know the surge was different on the coastline, but the water that still made it into the parish was tremendous. But I'll say the money shots that we used to get are starting to not be as effective. So to me, that is a good thing because we don't really go on, we don't like getting the shots. We'd rather be doing something productive uh, and, and doing other things. But certainly that's, that's, a, that's a lot of water that came into and, Terrebonne Parish. And Martin, that project on Concord Road that you've assisted in, um, they, they have Concord. Country Club Drive, which continues, is underwater. And on that project, we could have just run that levee right up, right up the Dularge Bridge, but they found out it was the same cost, just if we ended up where we continued it down and connected with the water plant. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So in the future, we're gonna do a substantial amount of good throughout that entire area. It'll protect the entire port and do the continuation of the levee that's now behind uh, right by Beauregard and just continue it on and we'll have a level of protection there we've never had before and with the new reservoir capacity and the additional 48 inch pump that's been put there we have a substantial amount of protection and you're not going to be able to get any money shots there. Yeah, that's a good thing. We, we hope we don't anyway. You know, another good note, just to let you know, Martin, I just got word that uh, Prospect is high and dry. It's uh, able to be passable through with a vehicle, and I'll get an uh, update shortly on Woodlawn. And Mar good. Martin, on that one, I just want to just mention that area is pumped by the Woodlawn Ranch Pump Station. It goes through Bayou Chauvin. And remember, I told you they had some circulating issues from what we were told. They finally got them squared away, and that should keep. And, when Prospect Street is dry, that's pretty much all of Roberta Grove, Senator Circle, the Mechanicville area. So good news, good news. All right, very good. What we're going to do, we'll take a break. When we come back, we are expecting the parish president of Lafouche, Charlotte Randolph. She'll be on the desk shortly. So we have both parish presidents here at one time. And as we await for this system to just get away from us, uh, we'll continue to bring you uh, some information. So we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. 